So I've covered quite a few tools and software that allow you to clone disks, um, manage partitions, do changes that are not natively able to be done within Windows. And Aomi reached out to me and wanted me to show you all Aomi Partition Assistant and kind of go over the software. Now, Aomi is a pretty big player in this space. I use a lot of their other tools on some of my troubleshooting USBs, which I will be going over in next week's video and the week after that. So stay subscribed if you want to check out those. But they do make a great suite of software. The only big reason I haven't really used them too much in the past is because like basically all of the software companies that create tools like this, a lot of the extremely useful tools for these are behind paywalls. Now, I just wanna walk you through Aomi Partition Assistant, a bunch of the things that it can do, um, and then we will go ahead and compare what the free edition gives you versus what the pro edition gives you, which is what you would pay for. All right, so here we have the software. Aomi provided me with a professional edition license code, um, but typically, most people would be using the free edition. It would say free edition up top or demo, um, and it would have a license key button up here. Now let's go ahead and talk about the tools that are available within Aomi Partition Assistant and some of the incredible things that it allows you to do. So up top here, you can see a bunch of tools. And also when you click on a disc, you can see a bunch of tools that it gives you. Now within clone, you have the ability to migrate your OS. You have the ability to just clone a disc and you have the ability to clone a partition to another disc. Now, Migrate OS is something that I've covered in a bunch of videos, and this is one of the big ones that a lot of people rely on these software suites to um, kind of leverage, but unfortunately, it is one of those things that is usually behind a paywall. Now, if we go to Convert, you can see that we have the Convert MBR to GPT. This is really important if you're going to be utilizing a newer OS. For example, Windows 11 requires GPT as the partition style. And a lot of people ran into the issue when they were trying to install Windows 11 that it said that their disk was MBR. So this is one of those tools that you could utilize in order to convert it without losing any data and having to wipe a drive. The dynamic disk converter is a lot more complex than a lot of people would end up leveraging. But what this does, it allows you to convert disks between dynamic and basic. Um, and explain like I'm five idea here for dynamic versus basic. Basic is what majority of your drives will be. As you can see in my partition manager here, all of my drives are listed as basic. And what that is, is it's a single drive and it has its own partition table. A dynamic disk can include multiple physical disks and have a basically merged partition table. It's much more complex and I often, or I really don't see it done very often. And a partition converter, which allows you to convert files between NTFS and FAT32, again, without losing data. Typically, when you have to switch these um, formats for a drive, a USB stick, for example, it ends up wiping the data. So being able to do it without wiping the data, super helpful. Now, FreeUp includes a bunch of tools that, you know, you may see included in other programs. So it has a PC cleaner that helps you remove junk. Um, it allows you to move apps to other drives. So this one's super helpful. Um, I highly suggest and you know advise people to move applications off of their C drive, for example, games and whatnot, so that their C drive is just things that the OS integrates with. Um, and basically, you know, majority of, of your other things are on other drives, especially when they're large applications. This one allows you to keep a smaller OS drive and two, in case of a failure, you're losing a lot less stuff. And then the ability to quickly delete large files, which is always nice. I utilize this a lot on mobile, for example, when I want to clean up my phone. Um, and I actually utilize everything or Winderstat to do this normally on Windows, but having this within the tool is pretty great. So recover is pretty self-explanatory. It allows you to easily recover a partition um, or recover deleted data. Now data recovery is not a simple thing and it's not an exact thing. Um, a lot of times you'll be able to recover certain bits of data, but not everything. So don't rely on this tool 
to replace anything that accidentally gets deleted or corrupted, but it may be able to help you get some of that stuff back. Now, if you've been watching the channel for a while, you may know that I constantly talk about how whenever you're wiping data from a disk, you're not truly wiping everything as the recover tab would kind of tell you that when you delete things, they're not always gone, especially depending on the way that you wipe the, the data. And if you know anybody that works in IT, in an IT space, whenever you want to get rid of an old hard drive, you physically shred the drive or destroy it. Now, you can utilize certain things to make data more difficult to recover. And that's what a lot of these tools do is it helps make the data a lot harder to recover um, and wipes the drive in a slightly more secure way so that you don't have to worry about that if you're gonna you know, sell an old hard drive or something like that. Uh, test is pretty cool. This is kind of like what Crystalmark does. It tests the read and write speed of a disk. And um, this basically tests the health of a drive. So if you've used any of those health tools, like the ones provided by a lot of the uh, drive manufacturers like Western Digital, Toshiba, Seagate, um, this does very similar to that. Now for the tools, this is something that's super useful. And the first one is creating bootable media. So in a recent video, I talked about how bootable media can make cloning your OS drive super easy. And the main reason for that is that you don't have to actually boot into Windows to get it done. Now, this is super handy for that purpose, but also if you cannot boot into Windows, if you ran into a major corruption issue um, or you're just running into a problem where it's not booting into Windows anymore, that's when you would utilize the bootable media because it is now becoming the OS that's being booted and you can utilize that to take a look at the drives and do things with it. Windows to go creator is really cool. It allows you to create a portable uh, Windows version on your USB. This is very helpful for people who create USBs to help them get around. I use another tool for this and I'll be talking about that in a future video. So again, stay subscribed if you wanna check that out, but this is extremely handy. The extend partition wizard is also very nice, especially if you're copying from a smaller drive to a larger drive and you'll notice that sometimes there will be unallocated space there what this will do is it'll extend the partition to use up all of the available space on the drive instead of having some space that isn't allocated and unable to be used by windows resetting windows passwords is a very useful tool um, that a lot of it professionals will rely on especially because people forget passwords all the time so having that as part of this is great uh, creating a portable version of Partition Assistant, which allows you to keep it on a USB so that you don't have to install it on systems. As an IT professional, this would be extremely handy because you could just keep it on USB. Whenever you have to do something on a computer, you just plug the USB in and you're good to go. You don't have to install the program, reinsert your license code, and so on. And then integrating uh, Partition Assistant into the recovery environment. Most people are never going to end up utilizing that, but if you end up having the recovery environment and having to utilize it, you can make it so that partition assistant is part of that. Now, as I mentioned, we're going to compare what the free version gives you versus what the paid version gives you. And the free version does give you a bunch of the partition tools. So being able to resize, create, delete, format, all those things, which is really great. Windows has this built in with the disk manager, but I will say that having a nice UI like Aomi does make that a lot easier um, and it's free. So you're not paying for it, not a big deal. Changing your drive letters, stuff like that, again, part of the Windows disk management, but being able to do that within a nicer UI, again, is beneficial. Uh, cloning disks and merging partitions is also great. And this cloning disks is actually great if you're gonna be migrating an OS utilizing another computer. So one big thing I noticed with the videos that I've talked about with migrating Windows, a lot of people were doing it on a singular computer, which is what those videos were focused on. But for people who are using another computer to migrate another computer's uh, Windows install from one disk to another, it's a lot simpler because the big uh, barrier that happens when you're using a singular computer is that you can't copy files that are active. And if you're in Windows, files are obviously active and that's where the difficulty comes in. But if you're using another computer, it's not utilizing those Windows files 
on that drive from computer A, for example, when you're using computer B to do the copying. So you can actually use the clone disk feature here to, if you know, if on my main computer, I wanted to go ahead and migrate my uh, streaming computers files from one drive to another, I can do it very easily using this. And this is part of the free tool. Uh, the PC cleaner, the smart check, and the ability to wipe drives is also part of the free, which is very, very nice. The ability to convert data between MBR and GPT is a part of the free versions. And a bunch of the wizards uh, and the windows to go is also part of the free. Now, if you want to utilize a bunch of the more advanced features, like being able to split partitions, being able to convert your system disk, which is what you need to do for Windows 11. So unfortunately you would have to pay to utilize that tool. Um, migrating your OS, which is again, where most people who have watched my previous videos, this is where they struggle with. All the companies that create these partition tools have all put this OS behind a paywall. Um, the nice thing is it's not overly expensive, you know, 50 bucks, um, but a lot of people would prefer using a free path to do this because most people are only doing it once. So it's not worth paying. If you're doing it a lot or you're doing it often, that's when paying becomes much more reasonable. Uh, moving applications between partitions, basically all the other features that I didn't mention as part of the free version are basically locked to the paid versions, uh, including creating the portable version, which is locked even further. And that's actually locked to basically the enterprise level of partition assistant. And that makes sense. Most people who are going to be using it in a portable version are an IT professional who's going to be working on computers all the time. Now, if you do want to try Aomi partition assistant, I'll leave a link in the description below. If you want to use the paid version, I will also leave an affiliate link in the description below for that. If you do want to try it out. Um, I know that it's a kind of a niche thing for people who would want to pay for it. If it's something that you're going to be using all the time, if it's a one-time thing. I completely understand where people come from, where they would only want to use the free version or a free tool. Um, I have a bunch of other videos that would help you. If you have any comments or questions about doing a particular thing, um, you can let me know down in the comment section below. I'd be happy to get back to you. But Iomi's partition assistant as a tool is extremely helpful. I really like the UI. Um, it is unfortunate that a lot of the tools that people would utilize uh, one time are behind a paywall. I can understand why a company might do that, um, but it is extremely unfortunate. So what I would like to know from you all is, would you pay for software like this? Or would you rather rely on free open source pieces of software? What kind of pricing would you expect to pay for something that you're only gonna be using once? Leave all these comments down in the comment section below, and I'd be really happy to see what kind of feedback we get. But anyways, I really hope this video helped you out. If you do want to check out Partition Assistant, again, I will leave links down in the description below. You can go ahead and check it out. Again, I do use other AOMI tools on some of my troubleshooting USBs. If you do want to check out how I utilize that or where it's included, stay subscribed. I'll be doing videos on those USBs in the next couple of weeks. But again, if you did find this video helpful, I'd really appreciate if you liked, subscribed. If you have any questions, comments, or feedback, please leave them down in the comment section below, and I will be happy to read and get back to all of them if, if I can. Big thanks to my patron sponsors, Slot Simon Stepback, and thank you for watching to the end of the video. If you do want to see any of my other videos that I've talked about software suites and tools, you can go and check out this playlist right up here. And as always, stay safe out there. I'll see you next Saturday.